Hello and you're all very welcome along to another episode of the Gaelic Stats Band podcast and club season is here obviously inter- inter-county season is all over but there's one more video to do obviously and that's to preview the football season by doing gradings for the counties involved and I'm delighted to be joined by Aaron Prendergast from G- or Gaelic Games Fan TV or nearly a, a tongue slip there uh, from Gaelic Games Fan TV to join me in discussion for the football gradings um, in this video as well. We did the hurling gradings with Super Dan Casey in the last video but now it's the football Football's turn and um, to take precedence and take center stage. Just before we get into the gradings, I'd like to mention our sponsors at Capture Athletics. If you want the best gear around, check them out if you haven't already. So, yes, Aaron, the football season, it's been over a few weeks now, like the LGFA and the Camogie finds over the last few weeks as well. No intercounty action last weekend. So it, it's just it's just the club now, no intercounty whatsoever. There might be a few under 16, under 14 games and things like that. But um, it, all in all, really, the intercounty season is over. So, um, yeah, the football season's over as well. Like, yeah, the club... You getting much into the club now? Um, yeah, like it's probably probably not not there just yet. Like watching obviously a couple of Dublin club games and everything else, but um, I think you know when it comes to other club championships, I I rather kind of wait until it gets to the knockout stages. You know that way, like um, like I think even in the Dublin championship, like in hurling football, I think there's a lot of shadow boxing in the early stages. Teams not quite right. Um, you do get a few surprise results though, and you do see some. Um, mad games and everything else, um, especially in the in the early stages. But um, yeah, like as you said, intercounty football is over. All about the club championships now, and obviously, I'm sure as the the weeks go on, we'll have a lot more to say about the uh, about the club championships. But obviously, for today, like there's still a lot to speak about in regards to the intercounty football. Um, you know, and you could probably you could probably keep talking about the year that we just had up until December, really. Um, you know that way but yeah now looking forward to, to getting into it yeah exactly so and uh, I'm sure there will be videos of the club championships on all our channels in the next few weeks so stay tuned for that so obviously we'll get into the football gradings though and as it was with uh, the video with Dan we'll go through by province by province by province and uh, grade each uh, county in alphabetical order so we started with Munster in the hurling video, the All Ireland Champions there from Clare, obviously. We'll start off with Ulster in this video, obviously, because the All Ireland Champions come from that county. But unlike the hurling video, we'll start off with a different county to the All Ireland Champions and in alphabetical order first. It's Antrim. So sorry about that. Antrim are the first county up, reached the Hatton Cup semi finals, stayed up at Division Three, and um, came close to down in the semi final of the Ulster Championship as well. Like it's decent enough season for Antrim to be fair, Aaron, and I I probably go for B. I don't know what what you think about that yourself. Yeah, yeah, I think a B or a C. Like I think maybe like a low B, high C, maybe potentially. Like it's it is interesting. Like they, I don't think they they definitely haven't gotten worse. Have they gotten better? It's hard to know. Like they did get to a Talchy Cup semi final, as you said, which was huge. Um, and they do seem to have seem to do very well. A beaten team, sort of around around their level. It's just, I suppose, the big thing now is can they make the step up? It's kind of hard to, hard to really see. Um, but I think on the basis of this season, like yeah, like they they stayed up relatively comfortably. Um, it got a little bit shaky towards the end, but they obviously had those opening two wins at the start of the league, beating Limerick like early on, which was obviously a massive win. Um, they did all right against Down as well, to be fair, in the Ulster Championship. Like they weren't beaten out of gate. Like it was actually, although it was a really poor game, I remember watching that on BBC they still made that competitive. So, yeah, I think I think a B overall probably is a fair assessment. I think to get, get to back-to-back Talchin Cup semi-finals is impressive. Only thing is, though, they will be kicking themselves that they missed out on the chance to get to a final because playing Leash, Soyo came up from Division 4, albeit, look, Leash are a very good team. It was a massive opportunity for Antrim to get to a Talchin Cup final and then playing your big rivals. Like, what an occasion and spectacle it would have been for Antrim football, but... Um, wasn't meant to be, and yeah, I think overall, I think a B is a is a fair fair rating. Yeah, I'd probably go for B as well with Antrim and Andy McAtee. I don't know will he stay on next year. It remains to be seen. Obviously, in the off season, next county, I think this is unquestioned. Really, Arma All Ireland Senior Football Champions for twenty twenty four. Congratulations to the Archer County, obviously, and G stands for Geezer, I suppose, is the line um, going around in the last few weeks. Aaron, it's an A. Undoubtedly, I know they failed in the Ulster Championship winning against them. They, they lost in penalty shootouts against Donegal in the Ulster final. They lost to Donegal in the Division 2 final as well in the league. But if you win the All-Irelands, it's an A. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um I think A A plus, whatever, whatever, you know, probably the best A there is. You like, I mean, at the end of the day, they won the All Ireland, so that's the pinnacle. As you said, like, yeah, it wasn't perfect for Armagh. I mean, in the sense that they could have, you know, they could have won that Ulster title. They lost the Division Two League final. But overall, if you had a said to any Armagh fan at the start of the year, you'll win the All Ireland, but you won't win the Division Two League final and the Ulster final, they would have absolutely snapped your hand off uh, in all honesty. I think even getting to an all Ireland final for Armagh was was very impressive. You can argue even deserves maybe an A then, maybe a B. Um, but I think haven't got over the line, beating Kerry, and obviously coming back from the adversity as well. You know, everybody was saying they can't win big games, they can't win tight matches. Um, everybody was questioning McGinney. You know, it was looking like it was looking like maybe Armagh were on the decline maybe after losing to Donegal. I know it was on penalties, but at the same time, it was another big game that they hadn't got over the line. But I think, as you said, you can't look anything past an A on the basis of what was an incredible season for Armagh, winning the All Ireland. And ultimately, that is the pinnacle. You know, that's what, you know, that's what every county competes for at the start of the year. Yeah, definitely. So, um, do you think Armagh will uh, retain their honour and crown next year? It'd be very hard to do, obviously, but uh, the confidence mm-hmm. is there now to get a second all out of the row. And you have Reen O'Neill there in brilliant form, obviously, brilliant form in the final. Barry McCambridge in the form of his life this season. Connor Torbert, absolutely excellent in the forward line. Jarry O'Burns having that memorable moment in the honour and final as well. Like, what's the next step for Armagh, do you think? Ulster title, surely, when you think about it. They haven't, it's mad to think they haven't won an Ulster title since 2008, and yet they have Sam McGuire in the, in the back of the bus. So, so like, Ulster title might be next on the agenda for these Armagh players. Yeah, I think so. I think it has to be the aim. has to be the focus, definitely. Um, Obviously, a lot will depend on draws and everything else. I actually think it would nearly suit Armagh to actually have a tougher draw this time around. Um, I think to come through those matches might stead to them a little better in the build up to a final because I think maybe in the run up to Ulster finals in the last couple of years they've actually been a little bit undercooked. Um and I think maybe that's cost them a little bit because like they got better after that Donegal game. They got better then they got better as all the games went on, you know, and they faced Galway when they faced Derry in the group stages. They started getting better the more that the matches went on. And I think that's because they were playing tougher teams. Um so yeah I think I don't think there'll be a million miles off again next year. Like the only thing is, like, only like Armagh, obviously, in their history, have never won back to back All Ireland. But even when you look at it since the turn of the century, it's only happened twice. You know, Kerry 06, 07. Um, you're obviously looking at Dublin's six in a row team as well. So winning back to back All Ireland very, very rarely happens. And like, there probably will be some sort of a hangover there for Armagh. And whether that hits them in the league, you know, like we've saw with some counties in the past. We've seen some teams really struggle in defending their All Ireland, and I think that's actually been evident in the last couple of years. And um, when you look at Dublin this year, Tyrone three years ago, so yeah. But overall, like for Armagh, they I think for now they won't be worrying about next year. I think they'll 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 soak this in for as long as they can, and then I think when it gets to December, January, that's when the the focus for next year will come about. Just before we get on to Cavan and next in the gradings. Do you think Armagh could, is there a possibility they'll have a season like Donegal in 2013 or as you mentioned before, Tyrone in uh, 2022? Is there a possibility there with um, this Armagh team obviously win their first All Ireland in a long time? It's a hard one to know. Like, I think I backed against Armagh quite a good bit this year. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get myself on any more bad books of any Armagh fans. Although a few years ago, like, I, I, I praised them quite highly and said they could win an All Ireland in 23. So, you know. I should just maybe go back and change the title of that video and say 2024. But, um, but yeah, like overall, um, I, I don't, like, it's hard to really know. Like, I think, I think they have the potential and they have the ability to be up there again. There's no doubt about it. Like, between six, seven, eight counties, very little, I think, between a lot of them. And I think Armagh have more than what it takes to be there. When you look at it, the only games they've actually lost in the championship in like the last three years have been via penalties. So, you know, they're a very, very hard team to beat. And, um, I think with McGinney as well, I don't think he's one to drop his standards. I don't think the players will either. I think there might be a bit of a hangover in the league. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if they went straight back down. But I think coming back into Ulster, you will see Armagh back back to their best and back being very, very tough. And certainly, I couldn't re- I couldn't see it being as bad as what, what happened with Tyrone a couple of years ago. Because let's not forget, Tyrone had an exodus of players. I think this Dublin team are aging a little bit at the moment. Whereas this Armagh team... It feels like they're only really hitting their prime now. So, no, I, I don't think they'll... I, 
I'd be surprised to see them win back to back All Irelands, but I don't think they'll have as bad as a season as like a Donegal in thirteen or um, Tyrone in uh, twenty two. Yeah, definitely remains to be seen about Armagh next season. Then, obviously, congratulations to all the Armagh fans and the Armagh players on winning Sam Maguire and bringing it back to the Arthur County. Look at Cavan next. Um, to be honest, even before recording this video, it's going to be difficult to grade Cavan in general because they lost all three games in the All Ireland series. They lost against Toronto in the quarterfinal of uh, Ulster, but at the same time, they had that memorable win over the rivals Monaghan in um, in St. Kieran McParter earlier on the season, and they finished third in Division Two as well, uh, Cavan. So. It's a hard one to judge Ray McGalligan, obviously, in his first year, solid enough first season. What would you give them? Yeah, I'd probably give them a B, to be honest with you, just on the sense that it was Ray McGalligan's first season. There was maybe a bit of a change in the guard. few players coming in, few players coming out. Um, as you said, beating Monaghan and Ulster as well, I think was very, very impressive. They took Toronto to extra time um, and, and very nearly won that game as well. In Division 2, they were super competitive in, in almost every game and were closer to promotion than relegation, which for a newly promoted side in a very difficult division with teams like Donegal and Armagh, considering the seasons that they had, I think was very impressive. Um, and when you look at how well Loud did this year, uh, Cork obviously had a decent group stage as well. Um, I think for Cavan, the group, the group stages was just always going to be tough for them. Like Ultimately, they were in a very difficult group to start with, with Dublin and Mayo, like realistically getting anything from those games especially with the way that the fixtures were as well, like going away to Mayo, Dublin at home. I think they nearly would have rather the Rossies at home, to be honest with you. And Ross Common as well, like they had a very poor, like a poor season prior to that. But from the group stages onwards, that's when Ross Common probably started to actually turn things around, obviously beating Tyrone in that round of 12 game. So um, yeah, I'd give a B to Cavan. They had Paddy Lynch injured for those groups as well. So I think a very solid season. Um, like, yeah, it wasn't perfect. You wouldn't give them an A. But it was definitely progress, I think, from previous years. And I do think most Cavan fans, like, they should be happy enough with, with how the year went, all things considered. Definitely. So I'd probably give them a B as well. And they, even when Paddy Lynch uh, went off injured, obviously, uh, after that Tyrone game, when, when there were no Paddy Lynch for the group stages, we said it on our own podcast here, that once Paddy Lynch was gone out of the team, they were screwed. Simply, and uh, you, you just hope from a common point of view that they get him back sooner rather than later. If Garrow McKiernan, I don't know, will he come back into the fold? Connor Mine as well. Like, if the, these guys come back, Cavan will definitely be a threat next season. But I definitely agree with you on the beat for Cavan for the season that they did have. Now, this next one is a conflicting one, and I think this will be conflicting as well. And it's Derry League, they were absolutely superb, won nearly every game, won the Division One crown, beating Dublin in the final, a dramatic final in Grove Park. The championship then, they were absolutely terrible. Against Donegal, they lost in Ulster. They lost the opening two games in the order of group, including a hammering to the rivals Armagh up in Celtic Park, their home ground. Lost to Galway after Garth McKinless obviously stamped on Damien Comer's Achilles, which was a horrible sight to see. Beat Westmead, but only slightly. Beat Mayo by a penalty shootout. And then against Kerry, to me, Ireland just looked like they didn't want to win. That mm. sort of a thing in Crow Park, it was just a strange kind of a feeling. But this is a very hard one to judge. I'll, I'll uh, put my neck in the line first. I'm going to go for C. The league, they were outstanding. The championship, they were terrible. Maybe you go lower. I don't know what you think of yourself. Yeah, I, it is a difficult one. Like, they won the, what was it, the first league title since the 90s, I think it was. Like it, mm. I feel like the league should count for something. It definitely should. Like, the way they beat Dublin as well, like, that was a cracking game like arguably game of the year and um, that Dublin Derry game in the league final um, and as you said it's a brilliant league but ultimately like for Derry like the league the league was all supposed to be preparation for the championship like that was you look at this team Shane McGuigan Chrissy McKay Glass Rogers they you know a lot of these have been around for a while so they brought Mickey Hart in as 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 to get them to win the All Ireland, they didn't bring them in to win the league. To be honest with you, I know they, I know they won the league, and it's it is an achievement and everything else. But at the same time, like like who would you rather be? You'd rather be Armagh, who lost the Division Two League Final and won an All Ireland, than Derry, who, you know, won won the league title but ultimately had a disastrous championship. So I'd probably give them a D. Like. It's one thing losing in the championship, but the way that they did at times, like they got absolutely hammered by Armagh. Like that wasn't even a contest. Like it was, and considering Derry had obviously beaten Armagh by penalties the year previous, you're thinking like, what on earth has happened to Derry here? Um, 
They got beaten fairly comfortably by Donegal, Galway. They were terrible against Westmead as well. Probably lucky to win that game. Um, they did show like they they were better against Mayo, and they showed a bit more of that like Derry resolve and grit. Um, but then against Kerry, they were they were so poor as well. So um, I I would have to give them a D just on the basis of what they set out to do at the start of the year. Like they definitely did get worse from the season previous when you look at the championship. But at the same time, we know the qualities there and obviously the managerial situation is going to be very interesting now in terms of who they bring in. But, you know, it's a D for this year, but it, it, it doesn't mean they're a bad team. It just means they really underperformed on the basis of this year's championship. So like they'll be back up there, thereabouts next year. And, um, if you were, to, you could even make a case for them to win an All Ireland next year. Like it's not, you know, it's not inconceivable. This this is such a difficult one to call. You nearly changed my mind with the D, but then again, like the league, it should count for something, shouldn't it? Like they won mm-hmm. the league title, brilliant final against Dublin, obviously, La- national tro- trophy in Crow Park. Should that count count for something, though? It should, yeah, it, but. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, it nearly makes it nearly makes their championship look worse because, like, how can he be that good in the league, play that well against Dublin? I know some people say, "Oh, well, Dublin went on to lose to Galway and and everything else." And look, Dublin had a lot of players rested that day. They didn't, they weren't playing their best team, um, but they still had some very good results in the league. Like they beat Kerry, obviously, in the league. Um, so very good performance beating teams. Did they go too strong and then you know kind of, um sort of tore themselves out the more the championship went on. But I just think to look, like if 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 Derry had have lost in an Ulster final, you know, got through the groups, maybe lost one game, you'd say, all right, fair enough. You know, the, it, it happens. Like they lost to, to great teams. But when you, when you actually kind of look at it, they lost four championship games and like ultimately, like losing to Kerry as well. When Kerry, as we saw, lost to Armagh, they probably were there for the taking. Um, and they didn't. I don't think Kerry played particularly well that day against Derry. I actually think they played better against Armagh, funnily enough. Um, so I think, yeah, I just think for Derry, for the potential that they showed, the fact they showed that they were so poor, I, I just, yeah, I don't think he can go any higher than a D, in my opinion. And and look, if they hadn't won the league, I think it would have been an F. So, yeah, that's that's actually a fair point as well. Yeah, if, they, if you think about it, then the devil's advocate for a moment. And as you said there, if they finished like a third or fourth or fifth in the league and then performed the way they did in the championship, you always be thinking differently about the grade you're giving. So yeah. this yeah. is where I, I, I yeah, I, I'd probably go for D as well. Look, I think the league should count for something as well. But look, it was a poor enough championship from a dairy point of view and I'd probably give a D. One team, again, will go to the positives that we will say positive about is the league all. And I don't think there's any complaining about this, Aaron. It's an A. They won the Division 2 title, won the Ulster Championship, got to the honour of the semi-final. Considering where Johnny Gall were last year, Jim McGuinness has done a fantastic job there. Hmm. Yeah, I'd probably nearly give them a B, to be honest with you. And I know a B or an A, it's a, it's, I, think, I think it's just how things ended against Galway. That That's the only thing, I think. It's just the the end into the game against Galway. I suppose when you do deep it, like from where they were last year to win an Ulster title, to win. um, Yeah. Do you know, I think an A probably is fair, but at the same time, I do think there's more in the stunning goal side. And I do think they will still look back at that all around semi-final with a bit of regret, because I actually think it could have even been better for Donegal. Like, I think they could have beaten Galway that day, like with the chances that they missed towards the end. But I think, yeah, when you actually, think about the overall season and winning division two unbeaten like the only you know they only had what two defeats all year and that was to cork and obviously the semi-final to galway and winning the ulster title beating big teams along the way like beating Derry, tyrone armagh obviously the you know eventual all Ireland champions albeit yeah it was a penalty shootout but yeah yeah look i think fair enough yeah i think i think it probably is an a i just think that there there is more in this Donegal side still and I don't, I don't think they'll be happy. They would have been happy. Like they might be, they might look back at it now overall and say, yeah, it was a good season. But I don't think they'll be happy with, with how it ended. You know, that's the support of the discussion. I guess um, I changed my mind. One hour changed my mind, and the other will uh, see how uh, the rest of them expire. Obviously, but before we move on as well, Tony Gall next year. A lot of people are saying. I think Seamus Brady quoted on your podcast uh, in the preview preview show for the All Ireland final, Galway and Armagh. If somebody put a gun to his head to say who would win the All Ireland, Seamus said Donegal. And mm-hmm. 
that kind of got me thinking as well. Jim McGuinness in his second year, his second spell, in his second year, his first spell, he won the All Ireland, obviously, in 2012. Could lightly strike twice. I could do. Like I think, I think, I think it's very exciting going into next year. There's no clear favorite, in my opinion. Um, and I think maybe in previous, and I know, like this year in the end, you know, but everyone kind of said, "Oh, it'd be Dublin, it'd be Kerry, it'd be Derry." It was kind of one of them three. Whereas now, I think you could make a case for Donegal. You could make a case for Derry, Armagh. You could make a case for Dublin, Kerry, Gall. You know what I mean? There's so many teams now in the mix, and I think that's what makes it so exciting. But I think, yeah, Donegal will definitely be there like when you think about it i think they were actually probably up until that all or in semi-final the best team pound for pound in the country on the basis of what we'd seen overall like in terms of winning the ulster title coming through division two they had that slip up versus Cork, but they went out the next week and rectified it obviously with a big win versus clear in the quarterfinals they scored you know a big amount versus loud so overall you're kind of looking at a pound for pound i think they were the best team at that moment in time but they just, they just fell against Galway at the end of the game. They fell flat on their faces. Um, pressure maybe playing in Crow Park, young team, a team not really familiar with being in that kind of scenario. And as we've saw with Armagh, as we've saw with other big teams in the past, you probably need to lose a few big games before you can go and win it. Um, a lot depends on the, like a lot depends on the other teams as well for Donegal. Like if Dublin get their act together, if Kerry come back stronger. You know, it, it will be tough for Donegal, but they're definitely going to be in the mix. Um, but if I have to call it now, I I don't think I would be as confident maybe as, as Seamus in terms of, of them winning it next year. Interesting call. We'll have to look ahead to next year, obviously, with uh, the January predictions and all that, and maybe even April after the league. But we'll, that's for next year, obviously. But for this year, we'll give Donegal an A. Look at the side that won um, the Tatum Cup now, down. Um, they won the Tatum Cup, obviously. Lost to Armagh by a point in Ulster, which probably is forgotten in um, in some aspects. Obviously, Jason Duffy getting that winner in Clonus, which was a brilliant performance by Down, brilliantly um, executed um, the defensive master plan, obviously, but Armagh overcame that, and they got promoted for Division 3. Is this an A? I think it is, yeah. And I think I know maybe some people are watching this thinking we're being very generous to so many counties here, but I think the reality is just of how good Ulster football is at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Like, all the best teams you know, are coming from Ulster. Like, and all the teams in Ulster are all improving. Like, they're all, you know, Baron Fermanagh, who went down to Division 3, and obviously uh, Antrim, who were there. Like, every all of them are Division 2 teams. You know, Division 2, Division 1, Um, you know. So, like, yeah, I think down another... Like, you can't... You couldn't have asked for anything more, really. Um, They got promoted. Fair enough, they lost the league final. They won the Talchin Cup. Um, Like... Yeah, they lost to Armagh, but they, you know, they were very competitive in that game in comparison to last season. So, yeah, I think you have to give them an A on the basis of this season. It's going to be very interesting to see now. We've saw a lot of other Ulster teams step it up. We've saw Armagh being able to step it up gradually, kind of incrementally year on year. Same with Derry. It'd be interesting to see like what is the ceiling for this downside. Can they get up there and compete for Ulster titles in the next couple of years? Or is this as far as it can go? Because we've kind of seen that with Cavan a little bit in the sense that you know, they had that Ulster title, they won that. But then as the years went on, we could kind of see, right, they can't actually compete year on year with the big boys um, in terms of actually like consistently winning Ulster titles or being there year on year. Um, whereas you look at down, you kind of think, can they can they make that step up? It's, it, that's that's going to be the very interesting part. And I think next year is going to be a very interesting year for down in Division 2 and in Ulster because we'll actually get to see them play you know, big teams, which we haven't really got to see too much of for down. And, you know, down of, it's kind of been weird for down. Like almost every game they've played over the last couple of years, they've been favourites in. Whereas now, finally, they're going to go into some games as underdogs, which I think might actually suit them. I think Down could have a very good year next year when you look at the teams in Division 2 next season. And by the way, it is an A for B as well. Um, like you look at the teams in Division 2 next year, you look at Monaghan, Roscommon, Cork, Loud. They're decent enough teams, but they're they're beatable. And I think Down will definitely fancy mm-hmm. their chances of going up next season. But obviously that is for another video, obviously. You mentioned one team that is in Division 3 for Ulster Ireland. It is for Mana. We'll move on to them next. Got relegated from Division 2, but they were very, very competitive. And if uh, Shane McGullion takes that chance up in uh, a journey against Cork, we could have been talking about a different story with Fermanagh. Tadson Cup, they were disappointing in the end, lost in the quarterfinal to Antrim. 
difficult one to grade really from a uh, Kieran Donnelly's point of view. But uh, to be honest, Fermanagh probably had a better year this year, in my opinion, than they had had last year. Like they fell flat in their face in the Tartan Cup last season. There's no masking over that. But this season, they were decent enough in some games, and maybe they were just beaten by the better team against Antrim. So it's a difficult one to grade this. Yeah, I'd probably yeah, I'd probably go with a C. I think like I think they like when you actually look at it, they probably did overachieve last year in terms of getting promoted in the first place, like getting up to division two. Like when you look at the teams that were in division two and some of the sides they had to compete with in terms of Westmead down, who were obviously there, um, you know, Cavan obviously. So Fermanagh probably did actually really well to get promoted in the first place. Um and then they had some very good results. They beat Kildare, they drew a meet, they were very unlucky not to be Cork. Um just a few results went against them in, in in big moments. And um a lot of people thought they were going to be the whipping boys of division two and they were going to lose every game and go down, maybe in a similar way to how we saw Kildare. Um, but that wasn't the case. Like, I think they finished with five points overall, which you know teams don't often get relegated with that amount. Um, the big disappointment will be the Antrim game, just because they would have surely saw themselves as better than Antrim overall when you look at recent years, recent seasons. Um, so that defeat, I think, would have hurt them. But yeah, I think overall, I think you probably would have to give them a C on the basis of this year. Yeah, I'd probably give them a C as well. And they were very, very unlucky to go down, obviously. And they were very close to catching Loud, who had a very good year, obviously, in the championship as well. So brilliant season for Kira Donnelly's men and uh, hopefully from their point of view that they'll push it on next season. Uh, we talked about this county in particular, uh, Monaghan, uh, about their population and how they're overachieving in the last few years. This year in particular, though, they underachieved, um, it's fair to say. They only won two games throughout the whole season competitively, and that was Dublin and Crow Park and the Meath game, obviously, in uh, Brefty Park and Cavan. Not a very good year for Vinnie Corrie's men. No Vinnie Corrie's left. He's uh, post as Monaghan manager. We don't know who's going to come in now, but... It's a difficult one to grade given Monaghan's population and given their injury crisis this season. It's a difficult one to grade, but what would you uh, give Monaghan this year? Yeah, I probably would give them an F um, on the basis of how how bad of a season it was. I mean, I know what you said, like with injuries and everything else and all that, but I do think, like I'm giving them an F because I judge Monaghan highly. Like I think they're better than what they showed this year, like, it's one thing to lose games, but to be absolutely hammered in some of the games in the way that they were, like in the Russ Common game in the league. Then obviously you had the Kerry game as well in the championship. Blue, like what they drew it loud. They were very lucky that day. A couple of mistakes, but a loud keeper obviously kept them in it. Um, they done better against Galway actually. I think that was one of their better performances when they got knocked out um, in, in the round of twelve game and um, the preliminary round game, but. I just think overall for Monaghan, like relying too much on McManus, bringing him off the bench, we didn't see the best of, like against Dublin, they showed some of their, their best football, like Michal Bannigan was outstanding and then sort of fell off fell off a grid a little bit. Um, Kira McNulty not really like showing flashes of brilliance, but then not really following it up. So yeah, I think for Monaghan overall on the basis of this year, from where they were last season, I think you would have to give them an F. Um because they were all in semi finalists last year, very competitive in Division One, like and they they didn't just get relegated really, they got relegated fairly comfortably. I know it went down, I think, to the final day with Thrawn, but ultimately, I, th- I think we knew they were going down. They were really, really poor, and overall, I think, yeah, I think on the basis of this year, you have to give them an F, and it's it's no surprise really. Vinnie Corey's gone. Um, I think probably you know when a year goes as bad as that, it's probably players just not going in. It's probably retirement, more retirements coming. And you just hope for the sake of Monaghan football that this isn't a regression. To be fair, they do have their structures very good. They do have young players there. So I think Monaghan can make the step up. Will it be next year? Step back up. I mean, will it be next year? It's hard to know. But yeah, overall, I think a very disappointing season for Monaghan. When you list all those um, kind of... um his scenario was out and things like that. I, I'd probably have to go for an F as well yes the population has to come into it but they were all out of the behind us last year as you mentioned there to win two games all year against um, Dublin is decent enough obviously in the league but to beat Meath wasn't really much of an achievement we got to meet in a bit but um, but like that's a terrible year from a man and a point of view and against Galway they were good but too little too late in our opinions if we're both giving them an F could this county be an F as well Tyrone 
Like they had a pretty bad year mm-hmm. um, in the in the league, obviously lower end of uh, Division One. Obviously lost to Dolly Gall and Ulster, but then in the championship they got hammered by Dolly Gall. They were terrible against Ross Common. Like their shooting was way off that day in Healy Park. Yes, they beat Cork and Tullamore, but maybe you could say they were lucky with him at at the minutes that Chris Old Jones got his black card against Cork. At that moment, did you think Tyrone were a challenge card? Maybe not in Tullamore. So. Could you give Tyrone an F or a D, or what do you think? Yeah, it's definitely between an F and a D. It's a, it's a difficult one. Like I think they like they had they showed some good moments in the league. They they stayed up. They weren't relegated. Um, I think they stayed up fairly comfortably when a lot of people actually backed them to go down, including myself. I thought they would struggle. Um, in the Ulster Championship, like they, like they like they they struggled against Cavan, but they, they were very close to beating Donegal. It was a weird one. I feel like Tyrone were playing better. When they play better teams, you know that way. But when they were playing teams that they were expected to be, they really struggled. And I think we saw that at different stages. Um, and then the defeat to Roscommon as well was just a, a massive, massive kick in the teeth. I think like one thing we know with Tyrone is that they are a team that has potential. They do have very good players. They still have a good bulk of that All Ireland winning team from a couple of years ago. Yes, there has been a good few ret- uh, retirements, players up to now. Still have a lot of good players. Kieran Daly was a great addition. Still have Dara Canavan, Rory Canavan. Um, you're just looking for some more of the senior players like Peter Hart, maybe McGeary, these lads. Like you're looking for more of these players to step up a bit more and show a bit more. Um, and I think that's the the problem really from a Tyrone perspective. Um, so I think overall a tough one, like a prob- probably is, probably isn't maybe a D just on the basis that they stayed up in the league, but at the same time, I think for a county of their standards, they definitely should be aspiring for more. And I think next year is a big one because, like, since they won the All Ireland, like they've only got to one quarter final, and they haven't even, you know, they haven't got to an Ulster final. They like, and and when you look at it, they got absolutely hammered when they were in that quarter final. So I think as a county, like if you look back, if you look back at the last three years, it's a blatant F. But this year, I think with a like. They showed a little bit more signs for the future, I think. Um, the thing is now, though, like next year is a huge one. And like, will the same management still be there? Obviously, we all wish Fergal Logan the best and his recovery and everything else. And, you know, he, he he obviously wasn't really involved this year, so you can't put him into this. But for Brian Dewher, I think, I think it was a, a very poor season overall. So you're kind of looking at it and thinking, you know, who are they going to look at? Are they going to stick with the same management or are they going to look elsewhere? Um, because when you look back at the last three years overall like it has been very disappointing for what i think is a team that are very good yeah exactly there are some very good young players ben cullen has to be added to that as well obviously shea o'hare coming in this year and obviously um Owen mack at home the under 20s if we were adding the under 20s to this this is the funny thing you'll probably give them you book it up to maybe a c or a b because the under 20s were absolutely brilliant this year obviously winning the other the final against kerry but um maybe like the hurling we aren't saying uh, or hurling with awfully that is we aren't including underage unfortunately for tyrone I'd probably give them a D as well. Obviously, they stayed up. They did well against Donegal in the semi-final. They beat Cork when the backs were against the wall in Tullamore. You have to give them that as well. But the way the season ended against Ross Common was very, very poor. So, Brian Dewar, it will be very interesting to see, in particular him, does he stay on? Because the last few seasons, and I mentioned on your channel as well, their last two appearances in Crow Park, they got absolutely schooled by Kerry in the quarterfinal and by Dublin in the league. Dublin scored six goals against them in the league, which was absolutely embarrassing at times from a Tyrone point of view. So do they change manager now? Because I don't think the players are the issue. There are some very good players in Tyrone. We see that with the underage. We see it with Owen McElhone. We see it with Shea O'Hare, obviously. We see it with Ben Cullen, the Canavans, obviously. There are some good players. So is the problem the management? I think so, yeah. Like, and I know they won the All Ireland in twenty one, um, and 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 look, that was a phenomenal achievement, um, and, and and fair play, like for for what happened, obviously that year. But when you look at things since, like you have players who are opting out, you have players who are retiring maybe prematurely, um, young players not coming in, young players, um, being left on the bench, um, like, and then. When you look at performances wise as well, like they, they'll put in the odd good performance. They seem to do very well against Kerry in the league. And then aside from that, they seem to 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 really struggle. Um they've been on the receiving end of some absolute hammerings at different stages as well. You look at um Kerry in the quarterfinals, Dublin obviously this year in the league, 
and they're just very very inconsistent like uh, uh, me and you have been speaking about it for a few years they haven't put a run of three or four wins together against top, you know against top opposition in since that all Ireland you know what I mean I don't even know if they've won like four games on the bounce or three wins on the game on the bounce at all like since then when you look about league and championship discounted preseason competition so yeah, like I said it last year, I think that they, they should look elsewhere in terms of management. And I think they should this year as well. Like I think they're a they're a good team. There's good players there. Um, but I think under the current regime, it's it's clearly not working because one quarter final appearance since they won that All Ireland in 21, like in my opinion, they're wasting their team, they're wasting the potential that they have. And like they've got younger players coming through. Um, I don't know. They they just look like a county that's resting on their laurels a little bit. Like they won the All Ireland, they're happy with that. They're not really happy to kick on and, and win more. Um, do you know, like um, I don't know. I just I don't think the throne team of the previous decade that won three in five years. I, I don't think you would have saw that from from that throne team. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Throne um, do next season in terms of the management, but we're both giving them a D for 2024. We'll leave Ulster now, we'll move on to Connacht, and the first, obviously, alphabetically, is the order of finalists, Galway. They uh, agonisingly lost the final, obviously, to Armagh um, uh, last month. Yeah, it's a difficult one with Galway. They won the Connacht title, they did pretty badly in the league, in the championship in the all Ireland up until the final, they were brilliant, but then they just didn't t- take it with both hands like they should have. I don't know, would you disagree with this, Aaron? I'd probably give Galway a B for 2024. Yeah, it's, this is a difficult one, to be honest with you, because like the, the like everything was very good up until the all Ireland final. You know what I mean? Like It was all perfect, beating Dublin, beating Donegal, like two very good sides um, that nobody really... like Galway-Donegal was a lot more even, but nobody gave them a chance at all at beating Dublin. And it was their first win versus Dublin, you know, since what? was it the 1920s or something like that so like absolutely huge from a Galway perspective to obviously get over the line the league they stayed up that was the main thing to be honest with you um and you're kind of looking at it and thinking some of those misses some of those chances in the all in a final like otherwise they probably you know it probably would be an a um it's 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 a difficult one i think getting back to the final was huge but I think you have to look at it in context. They were in the final two years previous as well, and they probably played better in that final. And like it was, it was a final where I think any any side could have won. I think both teams underperformed, but Armagh and Galway they both didn't play their best football. If we're being honest, I think Armagh were just more clinical and took their chances when they came. So yeah, I think for Galway you probably would have to go for a B. Um, but like it's like a B plus um, because I still think to get to an all around final is still. An achievement, but again, I think context matters. And having obviously lost the final two years previous as well, you know, two two finals defeats in three years, like that's you know, Galway don't want to become like their their neighbours, you know. Yeah, exactly. And I suppose like, um, they they've come closer to Mayo in the last uh, three years or so to winning the All Ireland, but also with the uh, close but no cigar. But we both agree on a B for Galway, but uh, like they have to win the All Ireland next year or the year after don't they? Because Shane Walsh is getting older, he's not getting any younger, obviously, Damien Cobra, Paul Conroy, well-documented this year, excellent performance by all year, arguably a player of the year, not many, he's 35 years of age now, maybe has hinted at retirement over the last few weeks as well. Is it crucial for Galway to win the all Ireland this year or next year? I think so, yeah, like, I think, I think you know, obviously for Walsh, Comer, Conroy, like, they have a good bulk of younger players there, your Dylan McHughes, Johnny McGrath, um, Rob Finnerty is probably going to be around for a few more years. You got Tom O'Callaghan, Matthew Tierney, but for those key players like Walsh, Comer, Conroy, probably realistically like McD- McDade's obviously been in now at times through injury. Probably only got what two years, three years maybe left of them. You know, when you look at the injury issues that th- these players have had as well, you know, you could be looking at a year, maybe two years. So um, yeah, I think it's I think it's huge for Galway to you know if they get back to a final again. They have to take it this time. You know, they can't they can't lose another one. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see where what Galway team turns up next season, but we both give them a B ultimately close, but no cigar not winning the All Ireland title. Lee from her next, obviously, they got promoted for Division 4, losing that final to Leash. A magnificent achievement by Andy Warren's men. Well, it's going to be Mickey Graham's men next year because he's taken the reins as the new Lee from manager in the last few weeks. They went out of the Talton Cup against Wicklow in the preliminary round, which was a 
bit of a kick at the teeth for Andy Moore, I'd imagine, um, to end his tenure as Leitrim boss. Difficult one to grade. I'd probably go, given the players that Leitrim do have, the, li- the likes of um, uh, Tom Pryor's, the Ryan O'Rourke's, the, the, the Darroonies of, of the world here, you'd have to say probably a B for Leitrim just because they didn't get into the last eight of the Tatsu Cup on low. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think so. Yeah, like he obviously can't judge the Connacht Championship. Like you have to kind of take take that as it w- w- you know with a grain of salt or whatever. But um, yeah, I think in the Talchin Cup maybe a little bit of disappointment there. Who who do they lose to in the Talchin Cup again? They lost to Wicklow in the pre- preliminary round. Wicklow, yeah, yeah. Like they probably, I don't know. It is one of them where for Wicklow, I feel or for Leitrim, where I feel like they've kind of hit the ceiling a little bit. You know, you get promoted from Division Four, like. Can you push on? Can you kick on even further than, than what they have? Um, losing to Wicklow, yeah, I probably go with it, with a B overall because I don't think there'd be much between them and Wicklow. Wicklow probably are a little bit above, to be fair, given the fact that they obviously won the uh, or you know beat Westmead and and um, probably do have a few better younger players there. But yeah, I think for Leitrim probably would have to go with a B. Like promotion, like in fairness, was 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 a big achievement, especially like bouncing back from all the difficulties and problems that they had last year. Let's not forget how bad of a Talchin Cup that they had as well. So, yeah, I'd probably go with a B. Yeah, we're both going for a B for Leitrim. For London, obviously, like they've won very few games, but the games that they did win, obviously that win over Offaly uh, in the Talchin Cup in Tullamore was absolutely incredible, and that has to be counted in this grade as well. Obviously, Division 4, they drew against Tipperary. They drew a few games here and there as well. And they came close to Antrim, obviously, the preliminary round of the Tatsun Cup. And Antrim were a team that reached the uh, Tatsun Cup semi-final as well. I know they won only a few games, one or two this season, Aaron. But London, I think you'd probably have to give them a B just because of that win over Offaly. Like, that was an incredible win, not just because of the win itself, but the fact that they absolutely hammered Offaly that day in T- Tullamore. Yeah, I'd probably go for a B as well, given the the context like for, for London like in comparison to you know, what they have to work with in comparison to other counties um, in terms of the pool of players that they have, training pitches, facilities and everything else, um, travel, obviously, which is a lot more difficult for London, um, in, you know, in terms of having to come over, to come over, flying over here for matches and everything else and then flying back. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, I think overall you'd have to give them a B, like they were competitive in a lot of the games that they were in as well in Division 4. Um, like they finished seventh in Division 4, but at the same time, there was moments where you thought they could finish a little bit higher. Um, they were close in a couple of games. And as you said, they beat Offaly, which I think was a, a huge achievement um, for, for London football. So, yeah, you have to go with a B. Probably go for B for London next season. and um, Or this season, rather, and we'll see what uh, Michael Maher has up his sleeve next season. That's obviously if he keeps his job as the London manager. Mayo is next. Uh, difficult one, I suppose. Um, obviously losing to Derry in the preliminary quarterfinal, but the context is important there. I think against Dublin, they could have won that game in Dr. Hyde Park mm. if it wasn't for the Kieranke Kenny catch. It's a season of if spots and maybes, isn't it, for Mayo? Obviously, um, in Connacht, if Connor Gleeson doesn't come up and uh, get that point, if Mayo had a few decisions go for them, they could have had their hands in the Nestor Cup this year. If it wasn't for Kieranke Kenny's catch, it would have been the quarterfinal. And if it was for a bit more luck against Derry, they could have been in the all quarter quarterfinal there and then as well. So, season with buts and maybes, it wasn't a terrible season. I'll say this, it wasn't a terrible season for Kevin McStay's men. Ultimately, they fell short in these sorts of close encounter games. So, I feel like this is a tough one to grade. It really is. They didn't get to the all quarter quarterfinal. You, would, you wouldn't go anywhere near, near an F for Mel. Honestly. But... What would you give the bar? It's a difficult one, really. Eh? C, maybe D. Yeah, I'd probably lean towards a D. I, th- I think because ultimately they haven't, as you said, I don't think they've gotten worse, but I don't think they're getting better either. Um, and I think they're they're staying very static at the moment. And I don't think they're they they seem like they. I don't think they've really evolved under Kevin McStay. To be honest with you, like I don't think they've gotten better under McStay as they were. I actually think they played better under James Horan. Like they're still playing this running game um but i think they were better at that system under james horn than they were than they are now under kevin mcstay um and and the big problem with mayo that's been very evident over the last 10 years is, is just the mentality as well like they do seem to lose the run of themselves in high pressure moments and 
Um, previously, like for Mayo, they would they would be able to come through these games. They would find a way to get through these games. And like when you look at when Mayo lost in the 16, 17 final, um, you know, even when they lost in 20 as well, like I don't think that was mental fragility. I think they just came up against very, very good teams. But when you look at 2021, where a final, I think, you know, I think they had the better players that day. They should have won that game. Um, and then you're looking at the last couple of years, they've just, I don't know, they just seem to lose the run of themselves in, in big matches. They're either getting hammered or, you know, in games that they should be, that they're closing out, they seem to struggle and they just seem to make bad decisions in big moments. And as you said, look, they lost on penalties. It's one of them things. They could have won that. They probably would have given Kerry a better game than Derry did. Um, but they haven't kicked on. They haven't improved. And when you're looking at it for Mayo, like they're not, you know, when you're seeing Armagh winning all Ireland, when you're seeing Tyrone win it in 21, Dublin probably aren't the same team as a couple of years ago. Kerry aren't as strong as what we maybe would have thought. I don't like Mayo aren't a million miles off the other teams. It's just, it's just that thing of can they make that step up? And I think in attack, they don't have enough killers as well. They only really have Ryan O'Donoghue, Jordan Flynn, Matt Ruan, but like Tommy Conroy, I think is more of a ball carrier. I think he's had injury problems. Aiden O'Shea is not a scorer. So, yeah, I think maybe for Mayo, I think the big thing for them is can they find a few additional forwards maybe to come into their team next year because I think they need one or two better forwards just to come in and hopefully um, kick them on. I'm probably going to go for D. I probably lean towards your opinion. But uh, for Mayo, like, say it from another perspective for a bit. If Kieran Kilkenny doesn't make that catch, if Matty Ran or somebody around the middle for Mayo that day made a catch like that in that minute, mm. could we have been talking about a different grade for Mayo this year? Yeah, it's hard to know. Like, obviously, they would have went straight through to a quarterfinal. Um, they probably wouldn't have been able to play Galway, obviously, because of the um you know repeat parents so who knows who they would have played you, you just don't know and um, it could have been an entirely different year but at the same time like yes that catch by Kilkenny was brilliant but you had you know two three Mayo players all you know running for that ball um like I, ju I just think the game management for Mayo is just quite poor in big moments like like they just seem to get caught up like er all of them going for that one ball for Kilkenny Kilkenny catches the ball, he releases the ball off, and Dublin already have a bit of space. Whereas if Mayo drop off that kick out and they just let Dublin win it, then it becomes a much harder score to get. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that's the problem for Mayo is that it, their game management in these decisive moments is poor. Like pressing up on that kick out, I, I don't think made sense. Like I think they had to to drop back. So ultimately, I think you know we look at the we look at Kilkenny's brilliance, but at the same time. It was their own mistakes as well that cost them. Yeah, maybe so. We'll probably give Mayo D for this season, but um, for their sakes, hopefully they improve next season. And this county, this team, it's not a county, it's a city, um, I'll be honest. But like, this is a hard one to judge New York. It really is. Two games this year, they got hammered by Mayo and Connacht. Did well enough against Leash in the Talton Cup. We're ahead at halftime in that game. This is a very hard one to judge arm because they literally played two games all year. I, I'll probably have to go for C, middle of the road, I guess. Yeah, you can't like I think the only game you can really judge them off is Leash because like Mayo are like Mayo are different gravy, like in comparison to what New York have, you know what I mean? Like so I think like that game was never going to be competitive. It was always going to be one sided. Um, do you know, when you look at it, it's no different seeing Mayo play Leitrim or something of that nature, like if we're being for being honest, um, like New York beat Leitrim last year, but if Mayo were playing Leitrim this year, it like it probably would have been a similar scoreline, um, you know. And to be fair to New York, they lost a lot more players. They didn't have the same players as last year. Adrian Varley wasn't there. Johnny Glynn wasn't there. Um, they did very well against Leash. So I think on, on the basis of their performance against Leash, I'd give them a B. But again, like you're only really judging them off one game, and their sample size is obviously very small. Yeah, yeah, it's a very hard one to judge. Yeah, maybe we'll give it not a vibe, but to be honest, we'll give it a B. We'll give it a B just about. Ross Common, like, to be honest, the start of the year, the league was absolutely terrible, obviously. They fell flat in their face against Mayo in the college championship and uh, did so well. They didn't fall flat in their face in the group stage, per se, but they did lose that game, obviously, against Dublin. The damn really broke in that game. Against Cavan, they were kind of lucky to get out of it. It was only against Tyrone, really, where their season started to spark it to life. And then against Armagh, 
they got to the quarterfinal, mm-hmm. granted, but they only scored one point inside half an hour in that game in Crow Park, which wasn't really good enough. They got to the quarterfinal, but is this a D, Aaron? Because the, it, the league and the Connacht Championship wasn't really good enough for Roscommon, and particularly the first two games of the all Ireland series as well. It was only really the Tyrone game that they performed in, uh, in Oma. Yeah, it's a hard one, really. Like, it's... Yeah, it's between a D and a and a C. It's a very, very difficult one, this one, because as you said, beating Tyrone, huge win, obviously, for, for Roscommon. They finally kicked on where they couldn't in previous years. You know, they got to the quarterfinal. I, I just think with Roscommon, they just play within themselves too much. They look overcoached maybe a little bit. They, they're overplaying it. Um, like, they've had some good moments. I know they got beat quite comfortably by Dublin, in Crow Park, but I did think they actually played well that day. In in fairness, um, and even they they were wearing the million miles off beating Mayo as well. Do you know, was their focus going more so on the championship this year because they they had a very good league last year and then a poor enough championship? It's a hard one, really. I'd probably go a C, maybe just on the basis they got to the quarterfinals. Um, but again, you are looking at that relegation from Division One, and again, they were relegated fairly comfortably when you look at it. Um, so it's a hard one to know. Maybe the Ross Common fans can let us know a little bit more, but I probably would go, probably would go, mate, C or a D, it's, it's kind of hard. You're, you're going for a D, though. I just feel like one good performance of the whole year, quarterfinal or low quarterfinal. Yeah. Is that Does that really constitute even a C for a side that Ross Common, they were division, division one side this season? Hmm. I'm not sure yeah. does it constitute a C. So, mm, yeah. It's a different yeah, prob- yeah, probably, may- maybe would slightly go with the, like I suppose with Armagh, they were beaten fairly comfortably. Look, Armagh obviously went on to win the All-Ireland. So you do have to kind of put that into context. But at the same time, yeah, pro- probably a D probably is the fair one, maybe. Yeah, we'll both go for T anyway, but tentatively. Ross Common fans, obviously let us know in the comments what you think of that grade. Last county of Connacht, it is Sligo. Got to the semi final of the Tanton Cup. Didn't get promoted in Division 3, but they were very close to do so. Some excellent moments from a Sligo point of view and some very good moments for the future, obviously. Some brilliant players. The under 20 seem to be betting in really well with Tony McAdee's team. I'd go B for Sligo this year. Like, obviously, very good year in terms of performances and stuff like that, but ultimately, no trophies on the board. So you'd have to go B, probably. Yeah, I'd probably go with a B as well. Um, they were on the more difficult side of the draw in the Talchin Cup. Like I do think they were the second best team in that competition. They came closer to beating down, obviously, than Leash did. You know, that game obviously went to extra time. Um, nearly beat Galway and Connacht. Like, what a story, obviously, that would have been. They're definitely bridging the gap, like, or like obviously Galway, like bridging the gap, like ever so slightly, like maybe I look at, I think if Galway and Sligo play each other next year, it's probably not as close, you know, Galway probably win the game a little bit more comfortably. Like I still think they're a good bit ahead of Sligo. Um, it was just on this particular game, but Sligo are getting better. There's no doubt about it. There is under 20 players coming through and like division three next year. Like when you look at Tyrone from, or, or when you look at Kildare from Anna coming down, like Kildare obviously have a new manager. Can they kick on? You know, it's going to be interesting. Can Fermanagh get back up there? There's a lot of permutations. I think Stoigo could be a good outside bet, maybe a promotion next year. Maybe so, yeah. We'll both give them a B for their season, though, and that brings it into Connacht. We'll move on to Munster next. Um, there's no Leinster sides in the other semi finals. Uh, we'll move on to Leinster in a spot of it. But uh, we'll move on to Clare first, another side that didn't get promoted from Division 3. They got to the Munster final, challenge carry all the way. Could it be Cork and Cusick Park in that game as well? But they were beaten quite comprehensively by Toronto and Donegal, let's be honest, in the All Ireland series. I think it's probably a B when you look at us. They came close to carrying Munster, but ultimately they didn't go up to Division 2, which I'd imagine would have been the main aim for Mark Fitzgerald. But to be honest, the players deserve a lot of credit. 11 or 12 players missing at the start of the season, mm. including the likes of Owen Cleary. Um, David Tuberty, all the all them obviously were. I think David Tuberty retired a few seasons ago, but uh, Carl O'Connor was out this season. Um, a few others like that as well. If, off the top of my head, I can't say. Keelan Sexton was another, but like a lot of players missing at the start of the season, didn't get promoted though. They came close to carrying. I'd probably give them a B. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I'd probably edge towards a B as well. I think they 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 did overall have a very 
good season. Like in comparison to all the players they lost, very good versus Kerry, obviously in the Munster final. That game was a lot closer this time around um, than, than the previous year. Group stages, very hard to judge, you know, realistically speaking, like when like they're not an all Ireland team, you know, they probably should have been in the Talchin Cup. I do think that is the level that they should have been at on the basis of how things went in the league. It was just obviously because of how the championship, the Munster Championship was structured. Um so look, I, th- I think overall, yeah, you have to give them a B. They were very competitive, you know, obviously a lot was made about that game versus um Westmead and you know, decisions obviously not going their way and everything else. But yeah, I think for Clare they can be they can be happy with their season. So yeah, I'd have to go with a B. Probably go for B as well. It'll be interesting to see how Mark Fitzgerald gets on in his second campaign as Clare manager. It's my own county next, Cork. I'll say it firstly, Aaron, I'm gonna give us a D. Only good good moment of the year, in my opinion, was beating Duddy Gall. Very flat for the rest of the season. I don't know what you think, but I think it's a D. Yeah, I'd probably go a little bit higher. I'd probably go C. Um just but for, for for a couple of reasons i think firstly yeah the league was very disappointing like like obviously the start a couple of the games if you lost to Fermanagh, you would have been in deep trouble and you just about squeezed over the line obviously in that game there still was some good moments though like obviously beating Donegal was was a huge win um you know the performance against Kerry as well like you you weren't a million miles off winning that game as well like that was a very competitive match um, the loud game, loud narrowly won it. It could have went either way. So I'd probably give a C um, on on that basis for Cork. Like they, again, probably should have done better overall with their season. But I think on the basis of like obviously Brian Hurley was in now at times through injury as well. Sherlock wasn't probably had had his best year in comparison to previous years or didn't have his best year. Um, but I'd probably go with a C. They still had some good wins against Donegal. Um, good performances against Kerry. I think they've shown their potential, but I think next year, I think Cork kind of suffer maybe what, what we spoke about with Throne. When Cork play better teams, they play very well. They're very good as the underdog, but when they're playing teams around their level or teams below them, they, they can't really seem to break them down. They just don't know what to do. And I think the, like, is the defensive style that was built in from management, Kevin Walsh and everything else, like, is that, holding them back a little bit. I would like to see Cork maybe go for a little bit more and be a bit more expressive and get after teams um, because I do think they have the forwards and the players to beat those type of teams. You mentioned the Kerry game as well. Like That was a close game, obviously. But the disappointing thing from my point of view for the Kerry game, I know I'm nitpicking and maybe I'm being a bit negative as a Cork fan here, but in the second half, we didn't go for Kerry's throat enough. That's my qualm about it I just feel like if we went for Kerry's throat in that second half we could have beat them and created history in the Fitzgerald Stadium that's my honest opinion I think Kerry were there to be gone at that day and we just didn't do it in the second half yes the mm-hmm. win over Donegal was brilliant against Toronto and, Tull- and you look at the other games as well Limerick we were behind at half time and this is the Limerick team that struggled all year literally uh, they got relegated from Division 3 that wasn't the good performance Against Clare and Cusick Park, we were very, very flat and probably deserved to lose that night. But Clare just um, didn't have to rub the green that night in Ennis. Um, against Tyrone, I think we messed up massively. That was an opportunity to win a game and get to the other the quarterfinal automatically. We didn't do so that day. And it was just really, really poor from a car point of view. And then the low game, I just feel like at times there was some stuff that went horribly, horribly wrong that day. We held the ball for at stages for over four minutes and we did nothing with it. It was just too, as John Hayes said in the Southern Star podcast recently as well, too predictable from this Cork team. Mm-hmm. And they need to be more unpredictable next season, in my opinion. I don't know what you think about that yourself, Aaron, but it's just, I just don't like our style of play either. I lo- I want us to attack teams more often. If Kerry are there to be uh, going at, go at them. Don't sit back and and um, and sit in your laurels. That's what Cork were doing too often this year. And it was a pit of eyes at the low game as well. As, as soon as Chris O'Jones hit the equalising point, fisted back point over the bar, the first kick out the low they got after after Chris O'Jones point, we sit back, we rush back yeah. into our positions. Like, if we pushed up on the low kick out, we could have got up with a different result in his scheme. And the last play of the game just took the biscuit. Like, we held the ball again for three, four minutes. Low turned the ball over. Win a free down the other end. Sam O'Reilly puts it over. We're out of the championship. 
Like, I just feel like these sorts of decisions have to be better next season. John Cleary is going to stay on as manager next season. But I'm not sure if Kevin wants the right man. I think he's holding us back. I just feel like, yes, the defensive structure worked last season against sides like Ross Common and against Derry. It worked. But against Loud and against Cavan, we have to go for these teams' throats. And I feel like we have to go for Division 2 next season. No offence to the sides there, the likes of Ross Common, Monaghan, uh, Loud, Dow. We have to go up next year. Simple as. With the players that we do have at our disposal. <sighs> Ultimately, Aaron, I still think it's a D. I don't think you've convinced me enough to go for C, but <sighs> like it's a difficult one from a car point of view. Maybe you take this different bit differently on the outside, but you're you're still sticking with a C. Yeah, I'll still stick with a with a C. Like I think for Cork overall, like I think as you said, I think yeah, like there is that like it's a difficult one because they're set up to to try and obviously beat the bigger teams. You know, they, they want to be beating Kerry, they want to be beating Donegal, all these sides in these big games and they're competing very well in those matches and every now and again they'll pull off a shock but i think it's because of that style that style works well when you're the underdog you know but when you're the the team that has the ball and you have the majority of the possession and they're coming up against teams who are setting up in a very similar fashion to them in terms of getting men behind the ball and everything else they're struggling you know they're struggling to break that down so i think next year they need to find more of a balance because um otherwise i don't think they'll They'll improve or, or kick on, but yeah, no, I, I still think I'll go to see. It wasn't the best season overall, but at the same time, they still showed a few positive um, moments here and there. We'll probably have to agree to this, Randy. So I'm sticking with the D. Aaron is saying the C, but let us know in the comments what you think of Cork's raid this year. Another county which can't be kind of conflicts opinion for the 2024 campaign is probably Kerry. It's a difficult. Obviously, they won the Monster Championship at the lead. They were very underwhelming. They lost to Armagh as well, and they were very, very poor without really getting tested in the honour of the series either. Despite winning Munster, Aaron, I'd probably go a D for Kerry. I don't know what you think. I'd probably go a C again. Um, like I, I think they 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 stayed up in Division One. They did like they were well stayed up. Like they were they weren't they were very close to a league final, and they were never really in any relegation trouble. Like if we're being honest, um, but they're all right in the league, resting players. They done what they could in Munster. They weren't great in some of the games, but I think they were st- saving themselves in the group stages. Like they won every game at a canter. Like when you look at it, they beat Mead, like out the gate. They beat Monaghan out the gate. Um, they beat Loud very comfortably, uh, obviously as well. It's very hard to judge them games, but like Kerry done all that they could in those matches against Derry. They weren't particularly brilliant either. Derry weren't great, but they they won the game. Um, and then they got beat by the All Ireland champions after extra time. So. I'd probably still go to see. Like, I don't think they've gotten worse um, in comparison to last year or the year before. Um, but I don't think they've gotten better either. And it's this year has probably proved that, you know, much like Dublin, when we get onto them, these teams are a lot more beatable now than maybe what they were. You know, um, obviously Kerry, you know, when they won the, the All Ireland in 22, we thought, right, they're going to be very, very hard to beat over the next couple of years. And then we've kind of seen more and more teams now getting more of a crack at them. And Dublin are obviously the same as well. Like Dublin aren't the same team, you know, as the, the six in a row side. So I would still go with a C for Kerry. It's not like it wasn't an improvement on last year, but I don't think it got worse either. Yeah, it's, it really is a difficult one from a Kerry point of view because obviously your points are valid there against Monaghan, against Meath, and against Lowe. They were winning them at a counter. And against Derry, they won that game at the end in the quarterfinal at Crow Park. Like they weren't tested though. They weren't tested. Let's call a spade a spade. Mm-hmm. Against Clare, yes, Clare put it up to them in the last few minutes, but they weren't tested. In the first half against Cork, they were tested, but in the second half, Cork didn't go for their throat enough. And then once they get their big tests, they fail against Armagh. That's that was my kind of outlook on it. Like for the second half onwards, 30% accuracy wasn't good enough in that uh, in that semi-final. Again, we probably have to agree to disagree on this. I'm still sticking with the D because like, I feel like Kerry, that was their chance with Dublin out against Galway. That was their big opportunity to win the All-Ireland. And under their first big test, they failed. That's mm-hmm. that's my honest outlook. I do get your points on on the, they had to play what's in front of them. And there's no qualms about that. But it's just the one big test that they had, they fell flat in their face. Yeah, like I mean, it, yeah, like I suppose it will, it will have disappointed them, obviously, and obviously with Armagh going on to win it, 
I, I do think at the same time from a Kerry perspective, like it was a, a disappointing season overall. Like I suppose like going with a C, like it's not like I'm going with a B or anything. I still think it was disappointing in comparison to previous years. Um, but I don't think they've gotten worse overall. Uh, I think maybe it had one or two underperformers in comparison to previous years. And maybe I think it is the age old question, but I think they are crying out for a bit more in their forward line. I think their team has been very similar to, you know, their teams look the same for the last three years. I think they might need a few more additions into the team next year, just to freshen things up, I think. And obviously Mike Quirk has stepped away. I think Paddy Talley might be going as well. So Jack O'Connor probably going to be sticking around, but I think there is the, you know, there, there does need to be a freshen up with Kerry next year though, because if I think, you know, if they stay static, I think I think then it could get worse next year. Be interesting to see how they bury the younger talent like the Dylan, Dylan Ganeys of the world. If Kelly Burke sticks around rather than going to AFL, it'd be interesting to see how he um, translates. He's decent enough for him this year into next year as well. And David Clifford and Sean O'Shea as well. Kerry still do have some brilliant players, but they need to get that Celtic cross to get a good grade next season. On to Limerick. Again, this is conflicting. In the league, they were terrible. They lost every single game. But then the championship, they were on a run there of uh, three wins in a row, obviously, against uh, against Cork. They were ahead at halftime in the Munster game, which shouldn't be um, shouldn't be forgotten, obviously, in Parky Heath, which was a difficult place to go, obviously, for that Limerick team. Lost to down in the Tantan Cup, but then they went on a run with three wins in a row against London, Offaly and Tipperary, which was a brilliant achievement for them. And then lost to Sligo in the quarterfinal of the Tantan Cup. I don't know, I'd probably give it a C. Good championship, bad league, middle of the road. Yeah, I'd probably go D just on the basis that they went. Like, they they were coming down from Division 2 as well. Um, do you know that way? Like, for them to get relegated. Like, I, I thought they would stay up in Division 3 originally. I, I, I didn't fancy them to get relegated. I think they are... I think they were better than what they showed, Um, to be honest with you. And, and I think they showed that throughout the championship when, obviously, Danny Neville, Ian Corber came back. Um, like Jimmy Lee, obviously of the same regime as the as Billy Lee, so I, I I expected more from Limerick to be honest with you, just just slightly more. So I probably would go with a D, as you said. They showed a lot more potential throughout the Talchin Cup, and I think going into Division Four next year, they probably will be one of the front runners to bounce back up. But overall, I, I do still think there was elements of the season that Limerick won't be happy with. Again, we probably have to agree to disagree. I'm still sticking with the C. I think like three wins in a row in the championship was a brilliant showing, considering like the the losing run that they did have before that um, that three wins in a row. And the win against Offaly was absolutely superb. It's the uh, same as well against London and against Tip was a good win as well. And they tested the Sligo periods the quarterfinal of the Tantra Cup, so it still give Limerick a C. I feel like this county we might be in agreement on this. We might be our temporary F. Do you think? Yeah. Like, not a good year. Obviously, Division 4, they finished in the lower end of it. Yes, they beat Wexford in that game at the Tattoo Cup. They progressed to the prelims. But they won that game 3-5 to 12 points. Eight scores to 12. They kind of got lucky in that game. So, And with the likes of Connor Sweeney still there, Sean O'Connor was in and around that team as well. Some of the Clonmel Commercials players who did win in the club championship. Like Tipperary is still a player. Uh, uh, Paul Kelly stepped away after one year in charge. It just didn't look good around the background team of Tipperary, and I'd probably give it an F. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that as well. Like it was a very disappointing season for Tipperary. Like Connor Sweeney, I suppose, didn't really come back until the later part of the year. Sean O'Connor was in now through injury. Um, but I even seeing like Paul Kelly was doing an interview, I think, recently, and he was even saying like um everything was a mess, everything was a shambles, basically, and you know, the county board you know, wouldn't listen to any of the requests and anything. Um, and it probably is quite an eye-opener when you come from, you know, managing in the Dublin Club Football Championship to managing Tipperary. You know, like you probably say the facilities and training and everything else were probably better for Thomas Davis as a club than they probably are for Tipperary. And I'd say that was a an eye-opener. Um, but yeah, I'd probably have to go with F as well. I'd lost to Waterford. Um, and it, it's a massive shame, really, because Tipperary shouldn't be as poor as this. Um, but they have been. And, you know, you would really wonder, like, who, who are they going to get now as the manager? It's going to be difficult to see. And it's hard to imagine Tipperary were monster football champions four years ago. And mm. they lost to Watford and winning four years. It's it's a serious spot for Grace, but we both agree we're going to go for an F there. 
For Waterford, obviously expectations have to be taken into account here. Two wins in the championship. Incredible. Beat Tipperary, obviously, at their their home game in Farfield. And beat Longford at the Hatton Cup as well, who would be considered probably having better players than the Waterford team. I think Paul Shanky's done an incredible job in getting two wins Mm -hmm. for this Waterford team. And considering the players that they do have, considering the form that they had over the last few years, to win two championship games, not one but two, and nearly getting in the pre- pre- preliminary round of the Talented Cup as well. I think it's an A. I think it's an A. Two wins for Watford football. I think it's a very good year for them. Yeah, an unbelievable season. I probably would go with a B, not to be a, a bit of a dampener on it, but the fact they still finished bottom of the league, I'd, like I'd probably still go with a B. But I think, as you said, expectations do need to be put into the mix and obviously with Waterford football like they when you look at previous years and how bad it was like Waterford were going like there was talks about Waterford going on the same you know the same ways as Kilkenny football you know there was some people saying maybe we should get rid of Waterford as a, a you know as a national football league team I think they they kept them you know by what they've done this year I think they've you know made it sure that they're not going to be going anywhere um, but I probably just still could, would go to be just on the basis that they did finish bottom of Division 4 of the National Football League. But as you said, wins versus Tipperary and wins uh, versus Longford, I think, yeah, very, very good season. Yeah, I think it's an excellent season for Watford, but we'll agree to disagree there again. I'm giving an A and Aaron's giving a B. We'll have to see what the commenters think about that. Moving on to Leinster now, and it's Carlo. Um, bit of a disappointing year for Carlo, bottom of the group at the Talton Cup. We're in the promotion mix for a while in the in Division 4, but then they fell off a cliff. Their form fell off a cliff. Noel Cruz, no left, he's a post as Carlo manager. They got hammered in the Leinster Championship by Wexford. I don't necessarily think it's an F considering the play, the population that Carlo have, and that has been taken into consideration as well. But I do think it's probably a D for Carlo. Yeah, probably, yeah, like a D. It's a hard one really to know with Carlo. Like I think on the basis of what they have, the players that they have, I think... You know the Carlo Roizen era is 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 over now. Like let's be honest, they still have one or two players knocking about from that. Dara Foley probably is one who stands out. But yeah, like I think like things have been very static. I think I think I heard Paul Crew is left. I might be wrong on that, but I think I did hear that somewhere. Um, so I think for for Carlo in particular, it's it, yeah, it's it's just very very hard. Like they're not getting worse. They're not getting better. I'd probably go with a D as well. Yeah probably go for D as well for Carlo and we'll move on to Aaron's County next uh, Dublin obviously disappointing end losing to Galway in the all Ireland quarter final no Sam Maguire this year the league was decent enough obviously getting to the league final won the Leinster Championship for the gazillion time let's be honest um, but this is a difficult one because I think unlike Kerry Dublin performed brilliantly in some of the games and you were thinking wow they look really really good and even in the Galway game some people were saying automatically Dublin were going to win that game and get into the order of the final against Galway. Ultimately, they didn't, though. It was a shock at the Carrots. They lost to Galway. I'll let you go first on this one, Aaron, because this is a difficult one to grade in terms of, like, mm. I, I don't know, it's a difficult one to grade in some ways because they performed well at times of the season. Ultimately, though, losing the order of the quarterfinal for the first time since 2009, bit of a failure, I guess. Yeah, it's a hard one, really, like, because I think for Dublin overall, they had a very. Like I think when you look at the expectations of Dublin, when you look at what they should be achieving, having won the All Ireland last year, playing some of the football that they were playing this year, to lose in a quarter final is criminal, really. Like, um, and to be fair, like massive congratulations to Galway, but Galway missed big chances in that game as well. And Dublin, for me, should have at least got that game to extra time. You know, I, I think Galway can even play better than how they played in that game. Um, you know, against Dublin. So I think overall for Dublin, it's. I probably would go for an F to be honest with you. Like it's the first all you know, first time Dublin have lost, you know, in an all-around quarter final since 2000 and 2009. First time we haven't got to the last four. I just think on 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 what the team has, on the potential that the team has, the players that are there, I, and and even as well, like that there were a lot of disappointing performances throughout the year. Like when you look at it, um, like against Loud, we weren't great in the Leinster final. We won it by four points, but we weren't particularly brilliant. There was times in the group stages, I think we flattered to deceive a little bit. We beat Roscommon comfortably, but Roscommon, like we're, we're close enough going into the final 10 minutes. There was only one or two points in it. Against Mayo, we we, we managed to get the draw. We could have lost that game. Um, in the league, we were good. Like, don't get me wrong, we had some very good moments in the league and obviously got to the final, like losing on, on penalties. Like, it is it is what it is, obviously. Um, 
But overall, I'd yeah, I probably would go for an F. I just think on the basis of having won the All Ireland last year with the players that we have, um, the younger players coming through, the older guard obviously in the mix as well. I think I think I probably would go for an F for Dublin. Yeah. Originally, before I recorded this video, I was initially going to give Dublin a D, simply mm. because they were very good in the league. They were good at stages in the championship. We were thinking going to the quarterfinal. There's no stopping this Dublin uh, uh, Sky Blue machine after some brilliant performances. Then, bam, they lose to Galway. It was just unexpected. And I feel like those kind of results happen. So you kind of have to give it a D. But you're giving Dublin an F and you're giving Kerry a C. One word, why? <laughs> well, I, well, I think firstly, like I think for Kerry, they got to an all in semi-final and they beat Derry in the quarterfinals. Um, and I think... For, for Kerry overall, like they, they lost to the All Ireland champions. They lost narrowly as well in extra time. Like they even got the games extra time, whereas Dublin, like obviously, obviously only lost by a point. But I think Dublin really underperformed against Galway. I don't think Kerry, I thought Kerry played all right against Armagh. I think Armagh were just that, that little bit better and, and took their big chances. Um, I think, look, it's, it's, it's similar. There's probably not much in the difference realistically. Um, but I think when you're looking at it from, the year previous as well. Like Kerry had lost the all Ireland final, whereas Dublin had won it. Um, and I think for Dublin, when you look at both squads, both teams, I think Dublin do have a better team than Kerry overall when you look at the players that are there. Um, and I think there was just a, a lot of underperformers, really. I think other than Con, I think a lot of players didn't perform. Mannion didn't have his best year uh, overall. Costello was good, um, to be fair. Um, there was obviously a couple of injuries in there. Um, I think we missed the likes of Davy Byrne. Lee Gannon was obviously injured. Um, I think the older guard like McCarthy, Cluxton, I don't think had their best seasons. Um, so yeah, I probably would go with an F overall for Dublin, just on the basis of I think we played lesser opposition at times and struggled more so than when Kerry, you know, in regards to what what Kerry played. Interesting opinion. Lesser opposition than Kerry. Kerry plays. Yeah. Kerry played Monaghan Mead this year, who under underachieved massively. Dublin played against Ross Common, who reached the quarterfinal this year. Mayo, who are still a very good team under Kevin McStay. Low, who, who performed better against Dublin than they did against uh, Kerry. I think Low were kind of just happy to be in the preliminary quarterfinal once again to Kerry against Dublin. Mm. Low just gave it their all in that Leinster final. So. I feel like Kerry nearly played easier games than Dublin. Maybe, we, again, a few people in the comments might correct us here, but you think mm. you think Dublin had easier games than Kerry this year? I think I think maybe from in the knockout games. I think maybe in the group in the group stages. I think you could say no. I think I think in the groups, Kerry probably had 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 easier games. I think in the provincial championships. I think Loud came closer to Dublin, though, than Clare came to Kerry, like, if we're being honest. I think Loud came closer. Loud probably are a better side than Clare. I think that goes with, without question. So maybe you do have to put that into that into the into the factor. Um, but when you're looking at the knockouts, like, Kerry bet Derry, which obviously Dublin couldn't do in Crow Park. And then in the semi, you know, Dublin didn't get to a semi-final. And I thought Kerry against the All-Ireland champions were, you know, only one or two points off beating them. Um so both probably, in hindsight, both probably played similar levels of opposition. But I think in the big knockout games, I think Kerry did did slightly better. Interesting, interesting. I'm still sick of a D for Dublin. Aaron's going for an F, being too hard in his county. There's a similar team in this video, um, being yeah, hard in your county in this. But uh, we're both agreeing to disagree, obviously, on Dublin. Again, another county will definitely agree on Kildare F. Undoubtedly, mm -hmm. Talton Cup, they couldn't even win that. They lost every single game of the league, didn't even get a point. In the in the Leinster Championship, they got beaten by Lowe, couldn't even get to the Leinster final. We thought, okay, they're in the Talton Cup, maybe build a bit of confidence uh, like me did last year. They couldn't even win that. They lost the leash in the quarter final. I'm sorry to any Kildare fans, but it's an F. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's it's without question. Like they lost every game in the league, beaten in the quarterfinals, obviously the Talton Cup um, by Leash. Um, when they were one of the favourites for that tournament. So, yeah, he goes without question. Like a massively disappointing season for Kildare. And um, it's going to be interesting to see with Brian Flanagan obviously coming in. Can he galvanise the county? Can he get the younger players on board? Can they kick on? Um, because it's an important couple of years for Kildare because if they don't get this right, 
they could be in massive trouble now going into the next couple of seasons. Honestly, when Leash beat Kildare that day in Tullamore, were you shocked or surprised that Kildare lost to them? Not at all, to be honest with you. Not at all. Just given on the basis of how the year had gone. Um, like I didn't I know like in my own Talchin Cup predictions, I didn't fancy them at all. I think I I think I predicted them to get to a semi final and lose to Sligo in the semi final, I think is what I said. Um so they probably lost with him of a similar level, you know, between Leash and Sligo. There's probably not much too much between them. I I did think they'd win that game going into it, and it was mainly because of how Leash performed against New York just a, a week previous. Um and it looked like Kildare had maybe slightly turned the corner with a couple of wins in the groups, but um, it wasn't that big of a surprise given how this year has gone for Kildare. I think every time the going got tough for Kildare, they, they folded. And um, the only time they got away with it was against Wicklow, and I think that was more so because of Wicklow's missed chances than, than anything else. Yeah, I think we're both in complete agreement here today for Kildare, and hopefully for their sakes, Brian Flanagan brings more good times to the county next season. The side that not Kildare on the Tartan Cup is next, and it is Leash. I think it's an A. They won the Division 4 title under just a McNulty. Brilliant season, obviously. Yes, a bit of a blip in the road against Offaly, but they had a guy sent off. They were down to 40 men in that game. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the Talton Cup, they got to the final, coming very, very close to town. They had a few top scores in that competition with Evan O'Carroll and Mark Barry as well. So I think it's an A. Yeah, I think so as well. Yeah, no, excellent season for for Leash, I think, like for Justin McNulty in particular, I think he's arguably, you would say, up there with Kieran McGinney as manager of the year. Um, I think he's had a phenomenal season for for Leash as manager, like getting them promoted. They, they got promoted very handily. I think the only game they lost was to, to Leitrim. Um, they obviously won the Division 4 title then against Leitrim. They, they avenged that. Uh, but then, as you said, in the Talchin Cup, excellent season, got to a final, only a narrow defeat as well. So, I think Lee should be very, very happy. And, and look, in Division 3 next year, I don't think there'll be a million miles off promotion. Yeah, brilliant season for Leash, and obviously uh, for their point of view, hopefully they'll uh, progress even further in 2025. Look at Longford, Paddy Christie's now left, left his post of manager, and I know it's a small county, but a small population, but I think it's an F. They lost heavily to Meath. They lost every game at the Talton Cup. They didn't go up for Division 4 when a lot of people tipped them to go up, including myself. I think with the players that Longford do have and the manager that they had in Paddy Christie doing well with DCU with Secrets and Cup level, I think it's an FR. And I know they have a small population, but the players that they have, they should be doing better. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, like the fact that they've regressed into the same levels as Waterford, Tipperary, you know, on the basis of this year. Like, I mean, you kind of wonder what's happened. Like it was only, what, three, four years ago uh, under Porrick Davis, they were looking closer towards getting out of division three you know and now they're sort of um you know when you look at it in division four i suppose they weren't a million miles off promotion but at the same time a very disappointing season um, and i highly rate paddy christie as a coach um from you know being involved in backroom teams and everything else but sometimes things just don't work out and look he'll have his own reasons for that um but there was always key players who wouldn't play um from what i've seen so it's it's been a very difficult period. Um, it's mad in the Auburn Cup. They were always very good. They always seem to be galvanized. They seem to look ready for the season. Um, and then in the championship and league, they would just be very very poor. And yeah, I think overall, like losing to Waterford, I think was the was the final straw. And yeah, you would have to go on an F. Yeah, very poor season for Longford, and uh, we'll we'll see if they find a better replacement for Paddy Christie in twenty twenty five. A county that will get an A is loud. I think it's an undoubted day. All of the quarter finalists come close to Dublin in the Leinster final, which many counties have failed to do over the last few seasons. Ger and considering Joe Brennan replaced Mickey Hart on the job as well, I think it's an amazing season for Loud. A all the way. Yeah, no, I'd agree with you on that one. Yeah, I think um yeah, like given the a bit of turmoil, you know, like Mickey Hart leave, and I think some people laughed at the Jerry Brennan appointment. It sounded a little bit unusual um at the time when you actually kind of look at it. Um, given that Jerry Brennan had managed at inter-county level, hadn't really you know, been involved a little bit with coaching, but it just seemed a little bit left field. And I think it's been a fantastic season. Um, I think they've improved even more. So although they didn't have as good a league as the year previous, I still think they were very, very competitive um, throughout Division 2. The championship, they were better than last season, um, pushed Dublin closer than the year previous. And as you said, like beating Cork, getting to a Cork final. And even against Donegal, they competed very, very well. So I think for Loud, 
you know, it'd be interesting to see now, can they kick on even further? What's the limit on this Leo team? You know, what's the limit on Mulroy, Grimes, Craig Lennon, these lads? Can they get a few more additions? Can they kick on even further? It's going to be interesting to see. Definitely will. And it's undoubtedly for the what a season that they did have under Joe Brennan this season. And hopefully, from their point of view, they push on again next season. On to the rivals, Meath. Difficult one, I guess. Like, they stayed up in Division 2. They were in the All-Ireland Series regardless, obviously, after winning the Salton Cup last season. They were poured off in the All-Ireland Series. Colin O'Rourke said in the post-match interview against Monaghan that he'd stick around. He may as well because it's a five-year project. There's been rumours now in the rumour mill going around in the, the Mead County Board now that they're, they're unsure about Colin O'Rourke. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe he is is gone by the time this video comes out. We're not sure, but it's a difficult one for me. i will probably give him a D, maybe. Yeah, I'd probably go with D as well. Like they they stayed up in Division Two, which I think was was something at least. Um, and they never, to be fair, never really looked like getting relegated. Um, and and whether you know a lot of that was down to how poor Kildare were, it's hard to know. But I think they were they were solid enough in, in, in Division Two. They had had a couple of decent results, a couple of decent performances in there. Um, I think the All Ireland series is the big one. You can't really judge them on the defeat to Dublin. I think you know that there's a massive gap there. So you can't really judge that. Um, but I think the All Ireland series, like yes, obviously, look, Kerry, you're not expecting them to do that. And Monaghan and Loud, like to lose them games, especially the way they lost the game to Loud as well. Like Mead knew at the start of the year they had the group stages, they were there. So, like all Mead fans were telling me throughout the year was we're focusing on the group stages. They seen the draw and they thought, all right, that's actually okay. Like Kerry, fair enough. We're not gonna come close to them. But Monaghan were on the slide and Loud, Mead and Loud have been very close in the last couple of years. You know, Mead beat them even in the league. So I think for Mead, very, very disappointing group stage. Um, but on the basis of what they've done in the league, I'd give them a D. Yeah, it's a dis- disappointing season for uh, for me, definitely. And uh, we'll see if Culper Rourke does stick around as manager. Another county that'll get a low grade in Leinster is Offaly. I think it's an F as well, Aaron. Mm-hmm. I know I'm being harsh on the Leinster counties, but under 20 success over the last few seasons... In the Tartan Cup, they lost every single game. They finished sixth of Division Three in around that period as well. Declan Kenny and his manager, he thought there'd be a new manager bounce there. There clearly wasn't. I think it's an F considering the players that they do have. They still have Jack Bryners in this team. They still have Cormac Egan. Like, it's an F. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, like, at the start of the year, you were thinking, I don't think anyone predicted them to get promoted, but we definitely thought they'd be there thereabouts and maybe not a million miles off maybe third or fourth on the basis of the league um, is, is all what we kind of would have predicted. And that didn't happen. Like, they were, they just about stayed up. It was close. You know, they had a very, very bad start. I think they lost their open four games. Um, I think, you know, not many teams have lost their open four games and still stayed up, but awfully managed to to do that. Um, like, you can't judge them on the... You can't judge them on the defeat to Dublin, obviously, a bit like the Mead, Mead comparison. Um but the Talchin Cup, yeah, like, I mean, it wasn't even a difficult group when you kind of look at it, like, fair enough losing to Down, but losing to Limerick and, and London, like, what on earth happened there from an awfully perspective? And, like, Declan Kelly was obviously the man who won the under-20 All-Ireland, so it's, it's you know, it's a very, very hard one, to be honest, which it, to actually understand what happened and very worrying at the same time because um, there is a bit of pressure on Offaly next year. If they don't show anything, then all of a sudden, like, there'll be massive question marks asked because... You don't, you know, not especially for a county like Offaly, you don't always get under 20 all Ireland winning teams. Like those teams probably come around, you know, once every 15, 20 years if you're lucky. So you have to capitalize on it. And for Offaly, no one's expecting them to go on and win a Leinster title or, you know, get up to Division One or anything like that. But Offaly fans would be expecting them to at least be competitive. And at the moment, they're, they're not, you know, and, they're, and, and it actually looks like they're getting worse, which is even more worrying. It is. Uh, hopefully these young players do step up to the mantle in the next year's for Offaly because we definitely love them to do so. West Mead got promoted for Division 3, um, but then at the Championship, like amazing statistic in its own right, they lost every single one of their games. They played four games, they lost every single one of them. Albeit mm-hmm. three were against uh, top opposition, Armagh, Galway and Derry, but that lost to Wicklow in the Leinster Championship. Got them worried uh, for a few moments there. Like if Down beat Armagh, then they would have uh, took West Leeds place in the All Ireland series that that division four, three point would have meant nothing if that was the case. But uh, it's a difficult one for West Mead. 
B or C, maybe. Like, they got promoted for the three as champions, beat a very good down team as well. But then the championship is poor enough, albeit the three games were tough against the likes of Derry, Galway, and Armagh. B or C, or what do you think? Yeah, I'd probably go maybe C. I wouldn't be far off a D either, to be honest with you, just on the basis of the Wicklow defeat. I think the Wicklow defeat was very, very damaging, I think, for, for Westmead football. Like, when you think about it, like, if they had won that game, they then would have played. Kildare, um, I think Kildare were in massive trouble at that stage, um, and I think we- I think Westmead, given the confidence coming up Division Three, I think Westmead more than capable of beating that Kildare side. Look, given how good Loud were, you probably would have said that Loud maybe would have beaten Westmead. Um, you know, let's not take anything away from from Loud and Leinster semi final, but I do think to lose to Wicklow, like especially for Westmead football in particular, they do have a very good group of players, and you're thinking, you know. Like they should have, they should have won that game. But look, they did get promoted. They won the Division Three title. You do have to put that into comparison. They lost all their games in the groups, but again, probably not expected really to, to do anything. And even at that, they actually weren't a million miles off beating Derry um, either. So I'd probably go with a C. I think a D probably would be too harsh. Um, but I think overall for Westmead, they would be like they'd be absolutely kicking themselves about that Wicklow defeat. Um, just because. You know, avoiding Dublin as well and that side of the draw with Kildare being as bad as they were. Look, I know Loud are, are very, very good, but at the same time, it was a massive opportunity for, for Westmead to make a fist that I get into a Leinster final. Definitely was, and it was a game that uh, did derail their season a small bit, but I agree on a C for Westmead. This is a difficult county as well to grade, uh, Wexford. Um, did decent enough at Division 4. If it wasn't for a few results here and there, they would for a few refereeing decisions, they would have gone up instead of Leitrim for Division 4. They challenged Lowe's all the way in that Leinster Championship game. They hammered Carlo as well. But then the Tartan Cup, they lost every single one of the games. But then against Tip, I thought they were just unlucky to lose, having Tip scoring three goals in that one. Ultimately, though, probably a D for Wexford. Not an F anyway. I think it's a D because obviously they lost every game of the Tartan Cup, which has to be taken into consideration. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I probably would go with a D. Um, like they they did show some positive signs. Like it was a strange one. They ended Division Four on a very positive note. Like they absolutely hammered Longford. Um, I think it was, wasn't it? Um, but mm. ultimately, like Leitrim still got promoted because of the head to head game. Um, they're making progress, Wexford. Like you could maybe go to C arguably like given like was it um loud they played in the Leinster championship and I think they actually compete fairly decently in that game but then again the Talchin Cup was very very disappointing all things considered so probably would go to D um but I do think it is still slight progress from from last season um but at the same time they you know they will be disappointed with uh with how it finished up yeah, and hopefully for their point of view, John Hager, he does fix things for Wexford next year. They make a good um, go at the Tata Cup next season. And we're getting into the final count, you know, and it is Wicklow. Oshie McConfell's Wicklow. I don't know, will it be Oshie McConfell's Wicklow next season? But it is for 2024 anyway. That win over Westmead was a massive win in the championship. They beat Leitrim as well, the Tata Cup. Beat Carlo as well. They had some good moments against Down in the quarterfinal. I know they got relegated ultimately for two Division 4 this season. But to be honest, that win over Westmead was massive for them. And to get to the quarterfinal of the Tartan Cup mm. as well, I think it's a B for Wicklow. And they've good young players there. Maybe a bit of confidence to go for next season as well. Yeah, I think so. I probably would would go with a B. Like they, they were very close to staying up. Um, as you said, they beat Westmead. Very close to beating Kildare as well. A few impressive moments in the Talchin Cup. So, yeah, probably would go with a B. I think it was progression for for, for Oshie McConville, even with relegation. Um, and I think next season in Division 4, they're definitely going to be the favourites. There's, there's no doubt about it. They're definitely the front runners in Division 4 next season. Um, so, yeah, I think I'd go with um, yeah, I'd go with a B as well for Wicklow. Brilliant stuff. Uh, do you just before we end the video, like football in general this year, were you happy with the football championship? I asked Dan the question about the hurling championship. Would he would say Cork mm. saved the hurling championship and stuff like that. Uh, that's Dan, that's opinion, obviously. But yourself with the football, would you go along the point of view that there were good shocks in it, but then the style of football, there's still some question marks about it, and maybe the FRC need to review it and all that. Yeah, like I think overall, it probably was a very disappointing year in, in Gaelic football. It definitely was a disappointing year in the championship. Like, um, like even I was recording a video earlier, just looking back at my predictions for the year, 
and one of the predictions was game of the year. Um, and in the video, I was thinking, she's what actually was game of the year. It was there wasn't a game that that went into my head. The only one I could think of was maybe Dublin Derry in the um, you know, in the in the league final. Um, or Mark Harry maybe in the semi final. Galway Dublin was an all right game, but there really wasn't that many great games in football this year, especially in the championship. Um, a lot of disappointing games. Galway Donegal was probably an all right match. Um, but the final was poor. Like Kerry Derry really flattered to deceive. Um, a lot of provincial finals were were hit and miss. So there was a lot of disappointing games this year, albeit it was a very exciting championship. It was thrilling. There was shocks. There was surprises. You know, we never really knew what way it was going to go until the final whistle blew in the all Ireland final. But in terms of the standard of the games, I do think they were quite disappointed. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a, a, another year of Gaelic football, another good year of Gaelic football, obviously, uh, compared to the year that we had this, this year. But obviously Dublin and Kerry have been knocked off their perch. And we have new winners, obviously. And congratulations to Arma, obviously, on winning the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship in 2024. The club season is well and truly kicking off now. The intercounty season is well and truly in the mud. But uh, we'll we'll move on with the club championship uh, coverage in the next few weeks, obviously. And uh, as always, give the video a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And subscribe to, to uh, the Gaelic Sassman YouTube channel. It heads the channel a lot, obviously. Thanks to Aaron for coming on to today, today's show. Subscribe to his channel, Gaelic Games Fan TV. Thanks to Capture Analytics for sponsoring today's show as well. And until next time, we'll see you all then. And take care.